passage of Scripture. Leviticus chapter 6. I'm going to preach today on the subject. Keep the fire burning. Leviticus chapter 6. Beginning with verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night under the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall be put upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering of the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. And in verse 13, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall not go out. Three times in our opening passage of Scripture, we are told that the fire of God must not go out. Yeah, yeah. In verse 9, we are told, the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Verse 12, and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. In verse 13, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. You know, when God repeats something three times, He's trying to get our attention. God considered this burning fire a serious thing. And so should we. The fire upon the altar of God was not to go out. And our fire for God should not go out either. Amen? Amen. Notice first of all, what is this fire that they're talking about? The fire mentioned here in our opening passage of Scripture was originally started by Aaron the priest. Aaron, Moses' brother, was instructed by God to offer that first sacrifice and when it started burning we are told in Leviticus chapter 9 listen to this, verse 23 and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people and there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat which when all the people saw they shouted and fell on their faces so here's Aaron lays this burnt offering down before the Lord, and when he did, wow, God sent fire down yes. upon that burnt offering, and they took that fire of God and used it to keep their fires burning. So the fire on the altar came from God, and it represented the presence of God, and it filled the people with the glory of God. Yeah. That's what it says right there. The glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. His presence was all over that altar. Praise God. The people were filled with the glory of God and it caused them to shout and to praise God and it caused them to fall upon their faces and worship God. That's what that fire did. And this ever-burning fire was a token to the people of being in touch with God. That fire meant that God was in the house. When they saw that fire, they knew God was in their midst. God's presence was among them. God was in the house. And as long as God was with them, Emmanuel, God was with us. Same thing with that Shekinah glory of God that was a cloud covering the tabernacle by day and was a pillar of fire by night. That's what got them through those 40 years in the wilderness. Whenever that Shekinah glory would move, they would pack up their tents and follow that glory of God. And whenever that Shekinah glory stopped, that's when they would set up their camps. And no matter what time it was, whether it was in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening, they could open up their tents and look out over that tabernacle and see the glory of God there, and they knew that all would be well. That's why it was important the fire never went out. That fire represented the presence of God. The children of Israel followed 
that presence of God for 40 years. Now there's no doubt they got restless. Probably have got they probably got tired of being in the wilderness. But they also recognized that if they were going to survive, if they were going to get through this wilderness, they had to stay close to God and keep that fire burning. Amen? Amen. Note, it's God's desire that we as Christians stay close to Him, that we stay in continual fellowship with Him. James 4 8 puts it like this, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. David meditated about this wilderness wandering of Israel years later. And he recognized the fact that without God in our life, spiritually, it's like being in a desert. It's like being in a barren wilderness, a desert place. Without God, that's what our life is. You know, there ain't nothing out there in the desert. It's a waste place. And that is a picture of our lives without God. On the other hand, when you're close to God, when His hand of blessing is upon you, the Bible compares it to being a, an oasis. Mm. Trees bearing fruit, nourished up with the abundance of God. Like the children of Israel, David realized he had to stay close to God, lest his fire for God go out. Now turn over to Psalm 63. I want to show you something. Psalm 63. Written by David. Notice what he says here. Psalm 63. Beginning with verse 1. David declares, O oh God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh, to see thy power and thy glory as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Mm. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholds me. Wow. David had seen the glory of God in the sanctuary, in the house of God, in the tabernacle. He had seen the glory of God. And it made a powerful impression upon him. Just the thought of the glory of God, we are told, caused him to lift up his arms and start praising God. Every time he thought about seeing that glory of God, he got to shout and praising God. Yeah. Thinking about God and remembering the goodness of God kept him close to God. We got to do the same thing. You're going to get up some days and, and you're going to feel flat. You're going to get up some days and feel discouraged, beaten up by life. Maybe you're depressed. Oh, start remembering the glory days. Days where God's presence was so real, it just made you kick up your heels and shout, Glory! Yeah. Remember those days. Mm -hmm. It kept David's fire for God burning bright. Oh, keep the fires burning. It was the responsibility of the priests to keep the fire on the altar burning. And get this, that fire of God that he brought, it continually burned for 860 years. 860 years, that fire never went out. From 1446 B.C. to 586 B.C., the fire of God burned. It wasn't until King Nebuchadnezzar defeated Israel and destroyed the temple and took Israel into captivity that the fire of the altar went out. That's when it went out. 586 B.C. And it wasn't the Babylonians that caused the fire of God to go out. It was the fact that Israel had drifted from God into idolatry. They got away from God, started worshiping idols, and they no longer cared. 
if the fire of God burned or not. Didn't care. My fear, my concern is that the same thing is happening in the lives of many Christians today. They have allowed other things to replace God in their affections. God no longer has first place in their life. And because they've cooled off from God, their fire for God has gone out. Or if it's still there, it's just a flickering flame ready to go out. Like blown out candle. It's just a flickering flame. That fire that once burned bright is now just a little candle. Keep the fire burning. Never let the fire of God go out. Amen? Amen. Let me just add this. The fire of God didn't start there in the tabernacle. The fire of God has always been. It first appeared to Moses when he was on the back side of the desert. He was out there on the back side of the desert mm -hmm. and he saw this burning bush Yes. that didn't consume. He saw a burning bush normally when lightning would hit a tree or a bush eventually that fire would go out. But as he got closer and looked at this burning bush, he noticed it just kept a burning. Because this was no normal fire. This was the fire of God. God spoke to Moses through that burning bush and told him, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. Amen? Amen. And this matter of the fire of God. It wasn't just an Old Testament thing. Something that happened a long time ago and is long forgotten. It didn't end when the fire on the altar of God went out and the temple was destroyed. It didn't stop there. The fire of God always was and bless God, the fire of God always will be. John the Baptist came on the scene and he began his prophetic ministry by declaring in Matthew 3.11 he said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John the Baptist was in the middle of the wilderness. There was nothing out there. He wasn't advertising. He wasn't waving a flag. He didn't put an egg in a local paper. He was just out there preaching like a house burning down. People came from all over out to this desert place to hear the man of God preach. To see the fire of God burning within him. Even after the Son of God was crucified and buried in the tomb, the fire of God did not go out. In Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, as the disciples prayed, the fire of God fell and came upon them like a rushing mighty wind. And there were flames of fire hovering over their heads, indicating the presence of God. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. That's the fire of God still at work in the lives of the disciples. The fire of God in our hearts, in our homes, in our churches, represents the presence of God in our midst. No matter how tough life can be, no matter how hard life trials can be, we must at all costs keep the fire of God burning. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Not let the fire go away. Having looked at what is this fire, note secondly, whose responsibility is this fire? During the time of the tabernacle, it was the priest's responsibility to keep that fire of God burning. Leviticus 6.12 and the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. So it's pretty clear from the Old Testament it was the responsibility of the priest to keep that fire going. The tabernacle and the temple of God are now gone. Long gone. The office of a priest is no longer in existence. And even though those things no longer exist, the fire of God still exists. And the question before us is, well, whose responsibility is the fire of God now? Some would say, well, it's got to be the pastor's responsibility to keep that fire going. It's his job to keep the fire going. 
Some might say it's the worship leader's responsibility to keep the fire going. Uh, some might say it's the deacons and the church elders' responsibility to keep that fire going. And in one sense, yes, it is the pastor's responsibility to stir up God's people. If I'm doing my job, the Word of God will stir you up. I'm just fanning the flames a little bit. It's the pastor's job to encourage God's people, to challenge God's people, to exhort God's people. But what are you supposed to do when the pastor's not around? Well, you're not in church on a regular basis. I'm not always going to be around. I wasn't around for two weeks. If you were counting on me that I let you down, I was away on vacation. So what do you do? Can't it just be the pastor's responsibility to keep the fire going? Because there may come a day when God calls me home and I'm not around. Then what? <laughs> what about when you're on vacation? What about when you're away? Does it mean that we let the fire of God go out because the pastor or the worship leader may not be around all week long to, to pump us up? One of the most important things we need to learn about the Christian life, we need to rely on God and not rely on man. <laughs> learn to rely on God alone because God is the only one that won't fail you and won't let you down. Family may disappoint you. Friends may not be there for you. This pastor might fail you in some way. But Jesus never fails. Yeah. God Got that never right. Amen. It's good to have friends and family who encourage you. And there's great joy in the fellowship found at church. But to keep the fire of God burning within you, you've got to go to the source of the power. That fire of God comes directly from the throne of God. From the Father of light. We are told in Hebrews 12, 29, our God is a consuming fire. Amen? Amen? That's where the fire comes from. Not from me or the deacons or the worship leader. The fire of God comes from God. Now the answer concerning whose responsibility it is to keep the fire going it's found in 1 Peter 2.9 if you want to turn it. 1 Peter 2.9 is the answer. Whose responsibility is the fire of God? The answer is, it's our responsibility. 1 Peter 2.9. Here's what the Bible says concerning us. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who had called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. The Bible refers to us as a royal priesthood. What about that? We are the priests of God. We are His chosen generation. We are His holy nation of believers. And it's our responsibility to take the fire of God to a lost and dying world. Yeah. To a world in darkness. Yes. And share with them the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. The light of salvation that is able to save their souls. Amen? Amen. Friends, there is no greater responsibility than to keep the fire burning for the glory of God here in these last days. The time right before the Lord's return. Those priests refused to let the fire of God go out. And we as God's royal priesthood must not let the fire go out. Because it's the only hope for a wicked world in darkness. We need people of all ages to carry the fire. Young people, older people, single folk, married folk. And it's not just a matter of reaching out to those in darkness. It's just as important to keep the home fires burning. Amen? Amen. Right here, we got to keep the home fires burning. Every once in a while, church will go out of business. Where there were once lights on in that building, the lights are now out. Where that parking lot was once packed with people, the parking lots are now empty. Where there was once sounds of joy and praise and worship coming through those windows, building is now silent. I don't think there's any greater tragedy 
than for a church to shut down its doors due to lack of interest. For a church to have to shut down Sunday nights or Sunday mornings because people don't care. How many churches have let the fire go out and when the fire of God departs, there's nothing left but a dead church. And it's a sad thing when God Himself writes the words Ichabod on the doors of that church. What does Ichabod mean? Ichabod, the word means the glory has departed. God help us. May those words never be written upon the doors of this church. I like what we're told in Acts chapter 20. As the Apostle Paul preached, verse 8 declares, And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. That's how it should be. That's how God wants it to be. Many lights in the upper chamber. All it takes is a couple of folks that are on fire for God, a couple of Christians that are burning, shining lights like John the Baptist was, and those burning lights will encourage others to let their light shine. What is the fire? Whose responsibility is the fire? And thirdly, how do we keep this fire burning? A couple of things. Number one, you've got to get rid of the ashes. Do you see that in our opening passage here? Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12, verse 11. And he shall put off his garment and put on other garments and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. You see, after the fire of God burned, a lot of stuff that didn't get burned up was left in ashes. And ashes can put a fire out. So they would take the ashes outside the camp, get rid of them to keep the fire burning bright. Ashes represents whatever is burned up in the fire. And for us as Christians, there's things that God wants us to remove from our life. Things that are keeping that fire from burning. It may be some sinful habit that you're holding on to. It may be some wicked thing that you're indulging in. A little private pleasure that you're indulging in that's keeping the fire from God burning. you got to take it outside the camp. Give it to God if you want the fire of God to burn. Whatever it is that's keeping that fire from burning, you got to get rid of it. And there's a second thing. We keep the fire burning by spending time with God. Imagine if those Old Testament priests only showed up once in a while or only came when they had nothing to do. Well, let's go see what's happening at the house of God. A week might have passed. Two weeks might have passed. A month might have passed. And they would have went in there and said, Hey, hasn't anybody tended to the fire? Hasn't anybody put any wood in the fire? The fire done and gone out. No one even knew about it. That's what would have happened. Same holds true for believers. To keep the fire burning, we must spend time with God. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time before we cool off for God and begin to follow Him afar off like Peter did. So that's another thing we must do. We've got to stay close to God. Stay close to God. Thirdly, prepare your heart to meet with God by worshiping Him. I got up this morning. I was feeling cold. I was thinking, oh man, we got church today and I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. What am I going to do? Go back to bed and say, I hope somebody else holds the fort down. If I don't prepare my heart to meet with God, I'm not going to be much use to you. They'll say, boy, that pastor was flat as a day old soda today. Man, he didn't have it today. He had no fire going on today. So what was I supposed to do? I just started worshiping. I said, I'm not leaving this house until I get my worship on. I'm not leaving this house until my fires kindle up for the glory of God. I cried this morning. I rejoiced this morning. I started dancing this morning. I was ready to go. I was chomping at the bit to just get up here and start preaching. Why? Got my fire stoked up. That's what we got to do. I like what Jesus told the woman at the well. John 4, 20. 3 and 24. Listen to this. Here's what he told her. And this holds true today. He said to her, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers get that. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
For the Father seeketh such as to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Did you get that? If we hope to meet with God, if we hope to have our fires burning bright for God, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And then we're told those are the kind of people the Father is seeking to worship Him. What about that? To keep the fire of God burning, you've got to set aside time to worship Him. That's what God's looking for. A fourth way in which we keep the fire of God burning is through the Word of God. The risen Savior appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he shared with them the Word of God. Luke 24, 27. And beginning at Moses and the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the Scripture the things concerning himself. He just gave them the Word of God like a shotgun blast. <laughs> gave them the Word of God. Afterwards, they said among themselves, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the Scriptures? That's what the Word of God can do. It will burn within you like a fire. Whether you're here preaching or whether you're reading the Word of God yourself, it'll stoke up the fires in your soul. One last way to keep the fire of God burning, and I've only mentioned a few of the many things you can do. You can keep the fire of God burning in your service for the King. Listen, it's important to stay active for God. Stay busy for God. And it will keep you fired up for the glory of God. The worst thing you can do is become stagnant, sedentary, turn into a couch potato Christian. You know, they tell you when you get older, you got to keep them legs moving. you got to keep active. you got to keep them legs moving. Because once you lose your legs, you can't get around. And it's the same thing spiritually. you got to keep going for God. Keep going for God. There's no retirement for Christians. We just keep going until God calls us home. If you don't stay busy for God over a period of time, you'll start to cool off and cool off until that fire goes out. This preacher wanted to explain what he was talking about. And he was over this guy's house who had a fireplace with a bunch of burning, fiery logs in the fireplace. And he took one of those tongs and took one of those burning logs out and set it by itself. And for a time, that log burned but after a while, it started to go out, and eventually it cooled off, and that log that was once burning hot was ice cold. And the pastor said, see, this is what happens. If you don't keep the fire burning, pull back from God, it's only a matter of time before that fire goes out. Yes, there will be times when you're tired, times when you don't feel like it can go on, but it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. We will have the satisfaction of knowing we gave God our best, gave everything we had in His service. We're going to be pulling out of here one day. The Lord's about to come back. And when He does, I'm looking to hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's it. The only way we're going to hear those words is if we stay busy for God and keep the fire of God burning. Why don't we all stand?